Good to see you again. It's always good to see you again. In fact, it's always good to see what's coming up in the show. So let's have a look. How to put a 3D twist on a traditional still life. And a really clever way of drawing faces from the side. Plus a big art attack that makes a real splash. Now then, are you always being told to put your books away? You know, tidy them up, put them straight on the shelf. What you need are bookworms. You know, those horrible maggoty things that eat paper, munch through your books and generally crawl all over the pages. Perfect to tidy your books up. Look at that. <laughs> Bookworm bookends. <laughs> Good, aren't they? And simple to make in four easy parts. A four-part attack. For the front end of your bookworm, you're going to need eight sheets of newspaper. Open them out, then find two reasonably heavy stones and place them at the bottom of your newspaper. One at the centre fold and one at the bottom right hand corner. Then roll the stones up in the paper to create a tube with a stone in the middle and one at the end. And then add on some tape to hold it all in place. Then pull up the newspaper between the two stones and scrunch it to make an arch and use lots of tape to keep this shape. Then scrunch the end of the tube without the stone up into a wiggly worm neck and again use lots of tape. Then roll up a ball of newspaper and tape it to the end of the neck to make a head. Then add on a couple of small newspaper balls for eyes. Put one each side of the head, like that. And for the worm's saddle, Close one sheet of newspaper and fold it in half and then in half again and wrap it around the arched part of the worm's body and then hold everything in place with some tape. So you should now have something that looks like this. A wiggly front part of your bookworm's body with all the details and I've even added on a couple of bits of newspaper for cheeks where he's chomping his way <laughs> and it's the weight of those stones in his body that will prop up your books so okay that's the head end now let's give him a tail for the tail end find another stone and place it onto the edge of two closed double page spreads of newspaper roll it up and put some tape onto it this will hold the stone in place then twist the other end to make a pointy tail. And again, use lots of tape to hold everything together. So now you have the two halves of your bookworm. Next, you need to make him burst through your books. Take a piece of cardboard box card and starting at the bottom edge, draw an arch. It needs to be big enough to cover the end of your bookworm's body. Cut it out, then tear lots of paper triangles up and start to glue them around the outside edge of your arch. On goes the glue, and the idea is to let the triangles stick out over the edge like this. And when you've stuck them all the way around, pop some more glue into the middle, and then press it onto the end of your bookworm's body. Till it dries. Then make another one in exactly the same way for the tail end and glue that on as well. And that cardboard makes a nice flat surface for keeping your books upright. And those torn triangles look like rip pages where he's burst through the book. Now you need to bring him to life, so let's give him some worm skin. Mix some water with PVA glue and paste on a layer of kitchen paper. And the idea is to go over both halves of your bookworm, taking care not to go over the ripped paper pieces. Just paste on your glue, pop on the kitchen paper, and when the whole thing's dry, you can paint him. This one's going to be a wormy pink colour, and you could always streak in different shades to make rings around his body. And don't forget to paint his face. And when you finish painting your bookworm and he's dry, you can add on some detail using a black pen. And I've even glued on some more ripped paper pieces around his mouth as if he's munched his way through the books. <laughs> then simply tidy up your books and place 
the two ends of your bookworm at either end, and not only does it look as if he's munched his way through the books, but his weight holds the books neatly in place. And you could always make a couple of other smaller bookworms without any stones inside, just to place on top of your books to make it look as if there's a real paper feast going on. <laughs> Try it yourself. Bookworm bookends. If you were out there in some kind of trouble, who would you call? These people. The Royal National Lifeboat Institution. The RNLI. They are the volunteers that help and rescue people in difficulties at sea. The RNLI have more than 230 lifeboat stations around the British Isles and together rescue thousands of people every year, often battling through extremely stormy and dangerous seas. Inspiring stuff. Time for me to launch a big heart attack. Drawing faces, hmm, hard enough, eh? But drawing faces from the side, well, what about all these bits going in and out? The forehead, the nose, the lips, the chin? Tough one. But not if you remember one simple tip. Ten zigzags, OK? Ten zigzags. Watch this. One face from the side using ten zigzags. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Just add an eye, and look at that. You have the face shape from the side. I'll show you that again. You've got the forehead, you've got the nose, you've got the top lip, you've got the bottom lip, and you've got the chin. Ten zigzags. And then add a sort of capital A on its side there. Then, if you just smooth out all these facial features, you start to get a real good face. See that? And do the same with the eye. And you can always add in an eyebrow and a nostril 
and then you're ready to add in the back of the head. So put that in like that, just put it in lightly to start with. And the neck, because you then add on the hair, and you put any style you want. There it goes. Don't forget the ear, put it here, look. and back of the hair like that. And there you have a perfect face from the side using 10 zigzags. Good, isn't it? And easy to remember. And if you do the 10 zigzags in slightly different ways, you get different faces. Now, for a girl, just do the zigzags slightly less jagged, but still 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And just round them off. See the way I've done these? They're not quite as jagged. A bit more delicate. And then put in the neck. Slightly thinner neck this time. The back of the head. And don't forget the eye. The A shape on its side. And the nostril. And then, again, you're the hair designer. So you put in whatever style hair you want. I'm just going to do this quickly like this to show you. And there she is. And if you do them slightly differently every time, you get different people with different features. These were all done just from 10 zigzags. Just do those 10 zigzags in different ways and have fun. Try it yourself. Draw faces from side on using 10 zigzags. Have you ever been to the movies and marvelled at all those special effects? You know, dinosaurs, goblins, aliens, everything you can possibly imagine. Well, Tom Lawton is an artist who actually makes those weird and wonderful things come to life. Take a look at this.
one for you. How do you fit so much genius into a little machine like this? Answer? You get all your mates out there to send in all their ideas and I put them in the Art Attack Gallery. Take a look at this lot. Ah, now look at this. Rupert painted this landscape using blobs of paint. The technique he's used reminds me of a French style of painting called pointillism, which just used tiny dots of colour to create a picture. Nice art attack, Rupert. Now this painting by James is very cool. He's created an abstract piece just using pale blue, and with the simple shapes and silhouettes of a bird and waves, he's created the impression of the seaside. And this is a fun art attack, Beth. And I think you've really captured the movement in these dancing tribesmen. Very simple, but very effective. And this is an inspired art attack by Sophie. It's a still life with a difference, because rather than colour the fruit and veg in normal colours, she's filled them in with crazy patterns. Yeah, nice still life by Sophie there. Do you know, that's inspired me to do my own still life. A still life with a difference. First, choose an object for a still life and cover it completely in clean film, pressing it into all the nooks and crannies. Now I'm just wrapping up this bottle. Then mix some PVA glue with a little water and paste on some small torn up pieces of tissue paper. Using different shades of tissue paper gives you a more interesting effect. And the idea is to do three or four layers in this way, going right down to the bottom of your object. And when you've covered the whole thing, leave it to dry. Then carefully get your scissors in around the bottom and cut the cast off as neatly as you can. Snip up the side and then pull it away from your object. Just open it out and out comes the bottom forget to remove the cling film. Then arrange your tissue paper cast back together and paste on more paper and glue along the seam to join it up. Just finish it off like that. Look at that. Perfect repair. And when that seam is covered, leave it to dry and you'll have something that looks like this. Good effect, isn't it? And you can make other objects in this way and even arrange them on a plate and there you have your own 3D still life. Or better still, you could glue them down onto a paper plate like I've done here. And I've covered that in tissue paper too. And see this? It's a sort of bathroom accessory still life. <laughs> or you could really go to town. Look at this lot. The more objects you add, the more spectacular it looks. There's a whole fruit bowl there, a cup and saucer, a jug, a bottle, and a pepper mill, all done in the same way. Oh, hey, and do me a favour, don't do the history of your mum's best ornament. Always ask permission before you cover anything. Those are some cool art attacks. We've got Peppa Pig coming up next. But first, Green Belt Adventure. Talk. I won, I won, I won! <laughs> yes! Yes, I won, right? I win the weekend stay in Toronto, plus tickets to the sound of... These are a few of my favorite, favorite things. things. Yes. I am 16. I won, I won, I won, I won, you right? Get, I, get, I won, right? You can't win your yeah. host.